Let's see here. God save the queen. Dun, 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 dun. Not how many British fans I just lost, but I do my terrible rendition. I'd save the, the queen slash king. Oh, wait. I probably lost a bunch of people. Hello, folks. Welcome again to another show. And this time I got the timing done right. I am the one, the only hobo, Tom. You are watching the, the hobo and, and definitely no girlfriend. In fact, I have a funny story. One day I'll tell you guys that some old woman at work tried to hook me up with some other woman at work. I think I'm so older then. But there's a whole bunch of bad things. Never date people that you're in a close working relationship with. Mainly it never works. I think I did it once. Oh, wait, what's this? Oh, oh, that's right. I forgot to pick that up. But yeah, I tried that once. Um, it was so-so. Um, if you are going to date anyone in a working relationship, make sure, like, there's at least, like, a floor or two that separate you. The separation and things get less weird. Oh, it can be cool, though. But that's a whole other issue. Um, again, I am the one, the only hobo, Tom, and I'm sporting my SPLL shirt, because all my other shirts are in the laundry, and I'm saving my NXT shirt, because this weekend, you can see this guy, and I'll make that announcement as well, here at Live in Daytona Beach at the Midtown Something Center, and I'll, I'll post more of that stuff later, probably more towards the end. But again, i like to start off today. By saying Happy Veterans Day. Um, I have mixed emotions about Veterans Day. We should always honor our veterans. Therefore, a little additional bonus. With all that being said, I do say I, I respect the veterans that serve our country. Um, unfortunately, I think I've been via workplaces where veterans have begun to take advantage of certain situations. Not what veterans that was made for, folks. Let's see here. Is this square yet? Oh, there we go. Now that's square. I wonder why my shoulder looked dipped. So there we go. That's a lot better. With all that being said, because we're in the kingdom of Greater Britannia, I'm going to change my rating systems a little bit, and you'll find out what that is shortly. Um, well, there, there is no pint of Guinness, the most luxurious thing, and tasty and best ever thing you could have probably across the pond. But I change things up fairly appropriately. Again, I'd like to thank all the people in the Friendoverse. Thank you guys for instructing me as to what food they eat across the pond. I have no idea. 
I know they eat a whole bunch of fancy stuff. I don't know. I think the only common food thing is like English muffins. And I know fish and chips at your local chippers is a big thing over there. I think when my mom lived across the pond for a semester at the University of London, she had a chance to eat hair, haggis, salmon, cuttlefish, and what was the other thing she didn't like? It's one of the things she didn't like, too. I forget. Oh, she, didn't, she doesn't like lamb. Lamb tastes good, though. But with all that being said, so tonight's Raw comes from... Well, it's it's, 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 it's pre-taped. But it comes from us from across the pond. Hey, Slicks, how are you? Oh, and you know what? Dan Blaze, you have... Unfortunately... The heck is that on the wall? Oh, wow. You have unfortunately exhausted all of my... That's a freaking killer ant. How'd you get in? Random ant. Oh, you're not going to let anyone know anymore. You have unfortunately... Oh, wow. Ant, ant, ant goo. You have unfortunately exhausted all of my gifts, and I do have to make more. I'll see what happens. At the show coming up. But because you have been such a spectacular person to talk to in Discord. Sir Dan Blaze. I'm going to make you a character. In my upcoming Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. Wrestling video. Thank you very much sir. Again if you get that kind of notoriety. I think if Slicks didn't leave. He'd eventually. Actually I might make a character. I have to make a character of Dan Blaze. Dan Blaze and Slicks, the Discorders. That sounds cool. Uh, and Bum Slicks, that'll be cool. Okay, but enough about that, though. Oh, I've already wasted five minutes, which is less time than Raw. Well, actually, more time than Raw wasted this time. Because, first of all, Raw opens, Raw opens up all the pyro. The Brits know how to do pyro right, almost as good as the Saudis. Um, they didn't open up. Also, I have one quick question. For those for those people across the pond, do you have like an equivalent of Veterans Day? I just don't know. So it's either ignorance or the fact that I don't live there. I know when people come over here to America, they're kind of shocked at some of the days they have. They're like, oh, you do this? What's this? Oh, all of that. Oh. Christmas is almost universal. Easter's semi-universal. I think most people have heard of Thanksgiving. Um, Halloween kind of confuses people. Thanksgiving kind of confuses people a little bit. Fourth uh, of July, people understand it's an Independence Day thing. Memorial Day, Labor Day. I think the only two really confusing days tend to be Halloween and Thanksgiving. And I know in other countries it's different. Um, so let's get back to Raw. It comes out with a Becky Lynch quick promo. Oh! Wait, not just once. Oh! And this is actually very insulting. I want to say this is the equivalent of giving this in the U.S. Um, I want to say, and correct me on this, this was to insult French people because between all the wars between English and French, here's a history lesson for you. This is actually worse because these are the knocking fingers of British longbowmen. I think one time the French said, where are you going to cut off all the knocking fingers? And the English would say, up yours, we have both our fingers left. I think I understand that. So I understand that now, and I want to say that's the historical context of it, I think. So Becky eventually... I guess this is really bad. I guess. I don't know. So It's not like flipping the... the, the oh, well, that, well, that's a thumbs up. That's something else. Well, this is a double flying bird and stuff like that. <laughs> I can't get demonetized because I'm not making anything. 
So it starts off, uh, Becky Lynch has a quick promo. She gets, she gets all the hype. Manchester! Um, then, of course, her partner's announced Charlotte Flair. They're talking the Kabuki Warriors. Asuka's hot. Asuka's that 30 hot, too. Kyrie Sane's getting to be 30 hot, too. You know that kind. That 30 hot, 30 criminal hot. You're like, oh, wow. I wonder how badly she could break me. But uh, uh, Becky Lynch actually goes for most of the match. She has her head stuck in Kyrie Sane's butt. I volunteer, folks. <laughs> no, I'm never going to get a call from um, and then so again Becky gets beat up a lot uh, eventually there's such a condescending tag in by Charlotte she's like oh I'll get in now Charlotte's a bitch yach cunt oh that's right British people use that word more often than Americans do she's just a cunt I can see that. Um, yeah. She's just a condescending cunt. Of a cunt. That's on a woman. Wow, I'm bad tonight. I don't know what's wrong with me. I didn't even drink. Tonight. Weird. Although, maybe it's this new... And I'll give a very quick plug out. Coca-Cola made like Coca-Cola cinnamon. Cinnamon flavored soda. Maybe it's that stuff. I don't know. But maybe it's just the fact that, that this is in Britain. I'm trying to be British. Um, so eventually she called Kyrie Little. <laughs> little man. That was funny because Kyrie is a lot shorter than Charlotte Fleur is tall. I forget what her, what her real height is versus her build height, but she, is, she has to be a good four or five inches taller than Kyrie saying. I know Kyrie saying short. Um, and then, then Flair just like allowed the tag to Asuka. She's like, "Yeah, go go tag her." It's like, why y you can't? That's against every aspect of tag team wrestling. You're gonna beat up one person, you don't let them tag in. Unless you're an arrogant, condescending cunt. See, I see how often I can drop <laughs> drop C word this show. Oh wow. Yeah, I guess it's just because it's from Greater the Kingdom of Greater Britannia. They say it a lot more often. Uh, Kyrie Sane eventually does beats up Flair. Uh, then Shauna shows up. Sha uh, Shayna Baszler, I'm sorry. Shayna Baszler shows up. Uh, distracts Becky Lynch. Allows Kyrie to beat up Flair. Uh, Becky got the hot tag. However, she gets dropped by Shayna Baszler. The referee doesn't see it. And then in the middle of the ring, there's a roll-up victory by Asuka. Yes, Asuka has mastered the most devastating move in all of wrestling. To you, Charlotte Flair. The roll-up victory. And then Bailey shows up. Uh, Bailey gets beat up by, by uh, Shayna Baszler. And then Bailey eventually just takes out her frustrations on Becky Lynch. I'll tell you what, folks. Just for those people across the pond. This is a fish and chips match. And then there's a little segment there with Ricochet and Randy Orton, the club, and Umberto Carrero. Still amazing people. Um, that was pretty good. Then it was Drew McIntyre versus Sin Cara. And I was scared because... I know it's not his hometown because he comes from Glasgow. He's built from Glasgow, Scotland. I know he's from Scotland. I, I couldn't tell you exactly where. But they do like to screw people in their hometown slash country. So I was worried. I'm like, Drew McIntyre can't eat the pin. But for the most part, this was a pretty good semi-squash match. Just enough offense from Sin Cara where I'm like, That's not, that feels about right. Uh, for the most part, Drew McIntyre beat beat up Sin Cara until he allowed Sin Cara to fly. There's these flippy stuff that's outside the ring. Um, 
And then he eventually did kick out at one of one, of one move that Sin Cara did, so that makes it realistic. Again, this is Drew McIntyre, a big, burly, manly man. For some reason, I have a good Australian accent. I think some Australians going to wind up punching me in the face one day. Because they're like, oh, they're all criminals. Or they're descendants of criminals. Uh, Sin Cara, again, he has a bit of a flurry, some offense. Yeah, it makes it seem good. Uh... <laughs> Uh, he got power bombed on the outside of the ring, and, and that was the end of that. And I Drew McIntyre tossed him in, set him up for the Claymore. It was a glorified squash match. It was a little bit different, though. So, therefore, this match, and I have this written down. Here, what do they call this? What do they call this over across the pond? You take a look. Keep this open for a while. It's a. Chippy, but uh, a, a, a chip buddy. There we go. That's something different. And Rowan has something in a cage with burlap over it. Rowan, did you learn something from Jake the Snake Roberts that you're not telling us? Because it wasn't DDP, it wasn't DDP yoga. But so we'll see what happens there. Oh, wow, there was only the one women's match? What a bunch of cunts. <laughs> Terrible. And next it was R-Truth versus the Bollywood Boys on a 2 and one match. I'll tell you what. They actually put a 24-7 graphic up for a change. So they actually have just as much production as I for the 24-7 title as I do for my whole show. I feel a little bit better about my show now. Uh, generally, the Bollywood boys beat up our truth Once our truth gets the upper hand, they start to run around the ring. Like a Benny Hill chase scene until they go up the stage and they run to the women's locker room. Good for you guys. Because you, you see the sign in the women's locker room. Ah! A bunch of cunts in there getting changed. Oh, terrible. What the heck? Is that water here? I don't know. Maybe it's just thoughts of across the pond. Who knows? Um, and then they, they run out, and then eventually they won't run into Rowan's changing room. Big mistake, guys. He just, like, kills both of them. Like, throws a couch against them. Like, throws them into, like, the, the support of the wall. Like, well, not, yeah. Yeah, like a supporting beam in the wall. The other one gets thrown into the wall. And then a couch gets thrown on them while they're leaning against that wall. So, so that couldn't have been good. Uh, Rowan doesn't... He, he he gives zero blanks about that 24-7 title. R-Truth sees what's going on and says, I'll leave you guys alone. Turns out the light and leaves. Smart move, our truth even though you didn't win the 24-7 title. I don't think Rowan really cares about the 24-7 title. Here's that thing in the box. What's in the box? Uh, then there was a Seth Rollins promo, and he almost got booed out of the ring. There was only one other worse than this. But it was um, eventually Seth Rollins versus Walter of the Imperium. I have to do this. <laughs> The ring general. Um, for the most part, Seth was getting the better of Walter. Again, leads to that theory about the WWE screwing people over. Oh, wait. Um, Before I get too far into that. Do we have one match so far? Oh, yeah. I like, hold that right. Um, the R-Truth Bollywood Boys. That was an muffin and jam. Match. Then again, we had the Seth Rollins versus Walter of the Imperium. Walter is so imposing; he's so so good. Uh, Seth, for the most part, gets the better of Walter um, until Walter just like German suplexes him. That looks so amazing. That's the only time crowd cheers. 
Kyle doesn't like Seth. I don't like Seth. Boo, Seth. Uh, then Walter's chops. Oh, wow. Literally just like... Walter also put Seth Rollins in a half bossing crab. Literally just sat on his back. It doesn't hurt that much, but it's not that comfortable either. Especially if you have a big 300 pound guy like sitting on the small of your back. Uh, eventually, Seth gets out of that. Uh, he does the springboard. And he starts to get the better half. But then Empyrean jump in and they jump Rollins. So therefore, this is a DQ finish. So this is a, this is a, what did them Brits call it? I don't even know what they call it. I haven't been over, I have never been across the pond. They wouldn't let me bleed across the pond. So this is a tip of a match. Seth needs to learn how to bleed. Like my boy John Moxley and Kenny Omega, baby. And my boy Cody Rhodes who bleeds all over the place. But it was not going to be um, the Imperium again. Yes, the only reason that everyone got tossed into the pool is that when we came back from break, we had an eight-man tag match. Yep. Uh, it was Imperium versus Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, and the Three Profits. Uh, Seth, for the most part, he still gets beat up a lot. Uh, K, K is awesome. K shouts, oh, I forget when it was, but he's like, K, I'm going to eat your face. Oh, Tranquilo. Like, like, you have to get off the bath salts for that. And that only happens in like Florida. Because only dumb people in Miami do bath salts. That makes you. Eat people's face. Ew. That's a thought and a half. Uh, eventually, KO gets to break up a pin. Walter does get superplexed. Um, of course, there's always a spot fest where all eight members get get their shots in. Uh, Street Profits were there just kind of really to save things, I think, and to offset the odds. Uh, KO did get, get the hot tag. Super kicks on everyone. Again, Spot Fest is sent on on Wolf. That was actually pretty good looking. Uh, the, the Street Profits, they do their double team stuff. It was, it was okay. Um, I don't know. This crowd was dead, though. I think this crowd sat through, I want to say, almost eight hours of wrestling. Wow, yeah, that's right. Main event's about an hour. Main event's like, yeah, about an hour. 205 an hour. Um, SmackDown's two hours, so that's four. Raw's another three. I'm sure they had a dark message in there somewhere. So, yeah, so that's about eight hours of wrestling. That's a long, that's, a, that's like a WrestleMania. But, I don't know, it probably was more interesting. So, this again. Was another. I want to get this word right. Listen, this is another chip buddy of a match. Oh wow, there's a lot of, there's a lot of this stuff here. I mean, have Cedric Alexander versus Andrade Cien Almas, and Zelina Vega is wearing some weird outfit. It looks like something she like stole from Rey Mysterio. Actually, the two of them are probably the same height. So, so yeah, that cunt could get away with it. Oh, another. I need a seaward counter. Too many. Um, wait a second. Oh, Jerry the King Lauder did a great job pumping up Cedric Alexander. I mean, I don't know why he built him up so hard. I don't know why Cedric Alexander is saying he's getting buried. Jerry the King Lauder said, sung nothing but praise for him. Um, I don't know if they hear that, though. Or if it's part of what they do. I don't know. Uh, Andrade, oh, he just starts heavy strikes and going after the arm. But, of course, Cedric can still fly. Fly Cedric. If I hit a flatliner, uh, but then we get the full, <laughs> we almost saw the full Andrade. Because Cedric is out trying to um, get Andrade away from the ropes. So he was pulling on his trunks. 
He was pulling in a downward angle, too. Someone somewhere saw a full Andrade. And, yeah, so it's, it's, not, it's not really a thank you, Lana moment, either. Uh, because it's Andrade. Um, again, then Cedric Alexander was being distracted by Zelina Vega, as usual. And then Andrade again hit hit, hit him with something that hit him with a hammerlock DDT. It was over. This match was way too short because Andrade wins. Andrade should have no less than a 15 minute quality match. And I'd even say, you know what? Andrade is the only one who should ever go like 20, 25 minutes with, with a few exceptions. There's always a few exceptions. But Andrade is one of those guys that needs to have like a good 15, 20 minute long match. Yeah, this was another chip, buddy. And then there was an Alistair Black promo. Yeah, they have to do something with him eventually. Then they finally got to their Veterans Day promo because they realized that this show is going to be shown across the pond, and that's probably where they get the majority of their wit ratings from. So again, that was pretty cool. Again, again, you saw what mine was. So I think I did a little bit better job. At least I said it right away. Even though I do have mixed feelings about veterans today. For some veterans, they're really cool about it. They're like, yeah, thanks, whatever. Some veterans say like, no, give me everything. It's like, I deserve everything today. And, and yeah, it's not cool. A lot of them, and, and wow. Oh. This is one I think I should have taken my shower. In fact, I did take them all. Well, this is when I finished dinner. I'm like, wow, this is terrible. She's, she just got booed. She does not react well to, to getting booed. Um, Rusev comes out. Rusev Day. Rusev Day. The Brits still remember Rusev Day. Um, and then she said how she was pregnant. And they're like, who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? And of course, Chris just wanted to chant something. They're like, Daddy's home. Daddy's home. And that upset Lana. And Rusev was enjoying all the chants. Bobby Lashley comes out, beats up. Beats up. R Rusev. Rusev does not do Machka. And because Lana was. Said, she claimed she was nine weeks pregnant. Which is. Two and a half months almost. So yeah, she would have been showing by now. And she was only with Bobby Lashley for seven months for seven weeks. That means of course Rusev was the father. However, this was all a ruse. And I don't know who wrote this. But they should be fired. That month. Um, then we had Eric Rowan versus someone who is not El, El Ligero. <laughs> I had no idea who he was. This was a squash match. I think I cleaned up a little bit. Oh, wait. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. I already gave that a... This was a squash match. I don't know. The good thing about this is he put the, he put the box and whatever on the table. And the announcers, uh, Jerry the King Lawler and whoever the other guy was, was, was absolutely too terrified to look at it. Because when he was done beating up the guy, not El Liguero, um, they're just, they're just like, did you take a look? No. Oh, God. Please, no. Like, I don't want to know what's in the box. What's in the box? Uh, this was a squash match, though. It didn't take long. At least they, they feature some guy who's who's not El, El Aguero. That was my fear. Like when they start, they said his name. It wasn't El Aguero. El Aguero is, I think, the only one I know for sure. I know there's others, but it, it, what, El Aguero has a de has a definite look about him. So at least it was not an unmasked El Aguero. I'm kind of happy about that. Um, again, this is this is that muffin and jam.
And then I don't know why they did this, but they had another squash match. They just they just fed the Viking Raiders, Mark Andrews, and Flash Morgan Webster. I was taking a shower. It was a commercial time when I started my shower. When I got out of the shower, it was time for another commercial. And I didn't see any of the match. And the Viking Raiders price squashed in violent fashion. Mark Andrews and poor Flash Morgan Webster. This is a hot seeming bowl of porridge. And then we get to the main event of the evening. It's actually pretty interesting. Um, and I need a, a new, I need to get another notebook. Yeah, definitely for Wednesday. Uh, we have Ricochet, Randy Orton, and Umberto Carraro taking on the OC. This is actually kind of fun. Um, it was weird to see Randy Orton as a face, though. I don't know what's up with that. That's weird. Um, the faces of Randy Orton, they, it was even weird to see them work together. Um, yeah, she, she, AJ took most of the beating. AJ took the spot Carl Anderson normally takes. It's the fact that AJ got most of the beating. Um, AJ knows how to hit a drop breaker, though. That's pretty cool to see. Umberto, again, he's pretty good versus AJ. However, once AJ tags in Luke Gallows, Luke Gallows is way too big for him. Eventually, Carl Anderson does get in there, gets speed up a little bit, does some offense, but actually more than AJ does. And poor AJ, there's a AJ, you just have to go in there and take one for the team. Uh, I do like the fact that Luke Callows headbutted Umberto Carrero on the back. The only proper way to start a match is a headbutt to the rest. Again, Delirious. Amazing roster. Go watch any one of Delirious's matches. Uh, Delirious versus Colt Cabana. Delirious v. Um, oh, Silas Young, Delirious versus Al Generico, Delirious versus Delirious and a Hollow, I think it's Hollow Wicked, take on the Super Smash Brothers. That was one of my all time favorite matches. And I could go on about Delirious matches again, amazing person, amazing, amazing professional and wrestler. Uh, then the headbutt to the back was kind of cool. Uh, Rand Randy Orton, then he then just took over the match. Um, he actually got knocked out for a little bit. Umberto hit a reverse, or uh, Ricochet got in, hit a reverse heel kick. Umberto, he tried his comeback until he missed his moonsault. And then Randy Orton got, got tagged in the ring, and wow! Randy Orton hit a draping DDT. Or actually, it was came a spot fest. Um, towards the end, Randy Orton actually hit the draping DDT on AJ, and then that set up. Yeah, because that actually was a spot fest. Um, that set up the RKO for AJ. He didn't go for the pin. Said Umberto came in, did that amazing moonsault. Umberto Carraro, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Um, again, uh, so Ricochet, Randy Orton, and Umberto Carrera win. Randy Orton said, you know what? I'm not that good of a guy. I do what I want, when I want, where I want, to who I want. So again, he's telling him, Ricochet, this is a one-time deal. Just wait till next time. It might be you. So this was a corned beef and cabbage dinner. And it was truly unfortunate that this chip buddy of a Raw waited until the very end to show its best match. What can you say? Um, so that was it. Uh, I think they come back to the States. I think they come back to Chicago. I think for next week, I think. I'm not too sure. Because I know next week, they're in Chicago because that's the go-home show for some for Survivor Series, which I 
Even though they, they goofed the dates up, so I have no idea. I want to say Survivor Series, I think it's the 24th. That'd be pretty good. That makes sense, too. Also, you can see this guy, Hobo Tom. This weekend, Saturday, well, right now, Saturday the 16th, when something really horrific happens. To me, um, you can see me at the Multicultural Center here in Daytona Beach for NXT. NXT. I had to miss the last one because it works, so I'm happy to go back. Again, with that, I'll make a video just for you guys about NXT. I'll give you my normal American rating system. And for the, so for the schedule for the rest of the week, um, again, I'll be putting this up as soon as I can, maybe tomorrow morning or well, it's going to be tomorrow morning anyway. Um, so it'll be, it'll be going up soon. And then it's going to be Tuesday Night Impact. Wednesday, AEW. I want to see how they follow up um, full gear. I'm also kind of interested to know what other video game references they're going to use. Because I think I call my show Full Metal Gear Solid by AEW. Uh, Thursday, I have off. It's my one day off. Friday is going to be my SmackDown review. God, I hope it's better than last week. And then again, you can see this guy, Hobo Tom, this Saturday at the Daytona Beach Multicultural Center. Right off of Nova Road, off of Joey George Ingram Road for NXT, so that should be pretty fun. And then I have Sunday off. Things are going smoothly. 